Um, so I'll be talking about the complexity of compressing and obfuscation. This is based on joint work with Gilad Ashrov, Ilan Komargadze, and Raphael Pass. So over the last few years, obfuscation has become one of the most exciting research areas in modern cryptography. Hi, can you hear me? Okay, so obfuscation has become a very exciting research area in modern cryptography. And at a high level, an obfuscator is a compiler which takes some program and transforms it into another program in such a way that it should preserve the functionality of the original program, so you should be able to use both uh, in the same way. But also, ideally, we'd like the obfuscated program to not reveal anything about the original program. The predominant notion, which might exist, is indistinguishability obfuscation, or I.O. Um, and slightly more formally, uh, I'll be talking about I.O. for circuits in this talk. Um, an obfuscator I.O. takes a circuit, produces an obfuscated circuit, in such a way that they compute the same function. And the security requirement is that if you have two circuits that are functionally equivalent and, have, and are the same size, then their obfuscation should be computationally indistinguishable. So there's a long line of work showing that IO has many applications, from classical primitives to much more recent primitives. And the main open question in this area is, does it exist and can we construct it? So towards that, there have been kind of two approaches towards constructing IO. The first tries to reduce I.O. to these seemingly weaker cryptographic building blocks. So it takes some building block and transform it into I.O. in some way. The other approach tries to use these new concrete assumptions uh, and base the security of I.O. on them. Unfortunately, the downside of these is that since they're new, they haven't been tested uh, for so long. So some of these are vulnerable to attacks. So in this talk, I'll be focusing on this first approach of uh, building I.O. from generic assumptions. Um, so there are quite a few of these uh, building blocks that imply I.O. I know there are some uh, more recent ones, like PRG-based ones, but since also some of those are broken, I'm just going to focus on these. Uh, so there are quite a few of these, like different types of functional encryption and randomized encodings and others. But while these constructions are really beautiful works, the kind of um, downside of them is that they don't really tell us more necessarily about the complexity of I.O., right? We're taking something that we, that we're kind of just reformulating I.O. in the language of another primitive, which is just as powerful as I.O. up to the assumption of one-way functions, which is inherent since we don't know how to construct I.O. from standard assumptions. But really, since we want to understand the complexity of I.O., we want to know what the weakest building block upon which we can base I.O. is. Towards answering that, one thing we can notice is that all of these requ require some form of compression. For example, in the case of compact functional encryption, the ciphertexts are short. In the case of collusion-resistant functional encryption, the ciphertexts don't grow with the number of functional keys, and similarly for other primitives. So it seems like compression might be sort of inherent for I.O., so in this work, we focus on this and define what we call compressing obfuscation. So in compressing obfuscation, we decouple the running time of the obfuscator from the output length, so we say a TL compressing obfuscator is one where the time to obfuscate is some fun function T of the circuit size S and the input length N of the circuit. And the size of the obfuscation is some function L of the circuit size S and the input length N. And parameterizing I.O. in this way already captures some familiar primitives, uh, starting with I.O., right? In I.O., we just require that it's efficient, so the, uh, the running time and the output length is just polynomial in the circuit size. And on the other extreme, we can consider just a trivial obfuscator that it takes some circuit, uh, runs on every input, gets the truth table, and outputs the truth table. Um, but that doesn't really give us anything, right? It trivially exists. It doesn't have cryptographic hardness. But in the middle, there's also uh, some stuff we can work with. So one such thing is exponentially efficient I.O. or XIO, introduced by Lin et al. Um, and in XIO, uh, it's allowed to have uh, the running time of the trivial obfuscator. So it's allowed to go over all the inputs, know the whole truth table of the circuit. But all we require is that the output the, the obfuscated circuit is somewhat a little bit smaller than the truth table, just slightly non-trivial. This has also been strengthened to strong XIO or SXIO by Batonsky et al, in which both the running time and the output length are slightly smaller than the truth table of the circuit. And these four settings of parameters already have some uh, really interesting results. So first of all, XIO along with LWE already suffices for IO, which is surprising, I think, um, because 
XIO and also SXIO, by the way, they're only efficient for circuits with logarithmically many inputs, right? Because they run in time 2 to the n. Uh, but along with LWE, we can get IO from XIO. And by the way, this is a non black box construction, which I will come back to. If you're willing to assume SXIO instead of XIO, we can get IO by assuming only one of functions. And both of these, I should mention, are with sub exponential security, so there's room for improvement. Um, Kind of the holy grail in this area would be to base I.O. on something like one-way functions, but we know that that's very unlikely to be the case. Uh, but that's okay, right, because there's still some questions we can ask here. For example, why do we need LWE when we assume XIO? Like, is it really inherent that we need it, or could we maybe just get I.O. from XIO assuming only one-way functions? Yeah? Uh, yeah. You're right. Um, that's absolutely the case. Um, uh, yeah, I'm kind of mixing black box and non-black box constructions in this graph because I only had two axes on the on the page. But thank you. Um, yeah. So uh, so these are some questions about this setting of parameters, and so it really seems like there's this huge setting of parameters for compressing obfuscation that we don't know a lot about. So in this work, uh, that's what we look at. Um, so in this talk, I'm going to focus on uh, two aspects of that. And first, I'm going to look at the power of compressing obfuscation, and in particular, the power of XIO. So we know XIO with LWE implies IO, but what about by itself? You know, since it's weaker, maybe, uh, maybe it's easier to construct. Maybe we can, do some, we can get some of the powerful applications of IO using only XIO. This is not the case. This is a lower bounds talk, after all. We show that XIO and one-way functions do not suffice for public key encryption. And this is in contrast with IO, right? IO can take one-way functions to public key encryption. XIO cannot. Uh, this is in a black box way, and I'm going to talk more about the black box model. Uh, secondly, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit, a little bit about um, the existence of compressing obfuscation with statistical security. Yeah? We can. It's in this extended black box model that um, was mentioned earlier, but I'm going to go over the model. Um, so I'm also going to look at the existence of compressing obfuscation with statistical security, because we know that IO doesn't exist with statistical security. But what about these uh, relaxations? So we show some constructions, but they're with very weak compression, and in particular with compression that's not really useful for cryptographic tasks. And we also match it with some uh, lower bounds uh, that I'll talk about. So, but first I'm going to focus on this, uh, on the lim limiting the power of XIO. Yeah? Uh, the construction for non-trial tasks is like AC0, do they have uh, good correctness, or is it just about approximate correctness? Uh, we show both, so some with perfect correctness and some with approximate cor correctness. Uh, yeah, so another reason to look at this XIO plus one of my functions to public key encryption is because transforming secret key crypto into public key crypto was one of the original motivating applications of IO, brought up even before IO was formalized. So this really shows that XIO in a black box model is uh, quite weak. Um, so towards this, uh, here's some intuition on why XIO might not suffice for public key encryption. And for some intuition, let's look at the transformation from uh, one-way functions and IO to public key encryption. In this transformation, the public key for the scheme is just an IO uh, obfuscation of the encryption circuit of a secret key scheme. Right? To encrypt a message, we just run this obfuscated circuit on the message and some randomness, which gives us the ciphertext. And Sahai and Waters showed that for a specific secret key scheme, this is a secure public key encryption. So let's consider what happens with XIO. Well, XIO runs in time 2 to the input length, so we can only obfuscate uh, circuits with short inputs. So here, the adversary can just run the circuit on all inputs and know the whole truth table, and that completely destroys all security for this construction. But there's something that we didn't touch upon, which is the black box model, right? Because obfuscation is inherently very non-black box. Let's take this construction here. This secret key encryption circuit, it's, based, built, it's built based on a one-way function. So it has, like inside of the circuit, a one-way function. So it's already non-black box. So to remedy this, we use the model of oracle-aided circuits, where we give the obfuscator oracle access to an oracle implementing a one-way function, and we replace the one-way function in the circuit with an oracle gate. 
And obviously not every transformation, you can't do this for every transformation, it depends if it's black box in the one-way function, but for this construction, we can do this. Um, and now, this allows us to argue about constructions that are black box from one-way functions, even though we're gonna give the obfuscator this code of this circuit that has oracle gates inside. So, uh, a little bit more in detail, this model of oracle-aided circuits was first used for uh, circuits with only one-way function gates, as, as the circuit on the previous slide. But the problem is that there are these new construct, like many new constructions that overcome this model, right? For example, if you want to obfuscate a circuit that itself obfuscates circuits, or if you want to use FE functional encryption to uh, generate a key for a circuit that encrypts, you can't do it with only allowing circuits that can only have one-way function gates. So this was extended in the so-called monolithic model of Garg et al. to circuits that have both IO and one-way function gates. And this is the model that we work on. So specifically, in our separation, we separate one-way functions plus XIO for circuits that look like this. They're also allowed to have eval gates for the XIO um, from public key encryption. Um, so this really captures the self-being techniques. Yeah. Yep, I think uh, that might have been one of the first separations to use this technique, but he didn't call it oracle-aided circuits, but it was the exact same technique. Okay, so what Simon's called black box separation was actually a separation already in the monolithic model according to this uh, Um, yes, like, uh, I guess like maybe the terminology is just not 100% consistent, but that that's true, he did allow, um, Yeah, it's much more formalized in, um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so this is the model that our result is in. And uh, I don't have time to like go over the whole uh, proof, but I'm just gonna mention a little bit about it briefly. Uh, so um, following the literature on black box separations, what we do to separate XIO and one-way functions from public encryption is to present an oracle relative to which one-way functions exist, XIO exists, and also any key agreement relative to this oracle is insecure. So our oracle consists of three functions. F is just gonna be a random function, which is gonna be our one-way function, right? Because uh, random oracles are one way. And uh, to represent XIO in this oracle, we're gonna have some random expanding function that's gonna take some circuit and just output a really long string to represent the obfuscation, right? Because we want it to be expanding so that we're not capturing IO. Uh, and we're gonna have an eval oracle which takes some obfuscated circuit, which is just a long string and some input, inverts it back to get the circuit C and just runs C on X. So this is gonna be our oracle. And it's easy to see that O and eval together already give us XIO relative to this oracle. So what we really need is just to show that any key agreement is insecure. It, it is a separation, but it's just that it separates a stronger version of XIO. Okay, so, so why, why you put the Oh, because it, it's like you can think of us, we can obfuscate circuits that themselves obfuscate circuits. So it's kind of like, uh, like if you think about the constructions of IO from FE, I kind of think of those as self-feeding constructions because like you, I mean, those are in the language of FE and not IO, but you like. But formally, yes, formally it's a black box separation, but it's, it's in this monolithic model, which makes it a stronger result. So again, what does it mean? Uh, it means that XIO, even one that can obfuscate circuits that obfuscate, obfuscate circuits and one-way functions, don't imply public key encryption in a black box. So that, that's a separation. Yeah. Separation yeah, exactly. Uh, thanks. Uh, yeah, so showing that any key agreement is insecure is the hard part of this separation. Okay, 
Uh, and to do this, uh, I'm not going to go into the details too much, but at a really high level, if we have some key agreement protocol, let's just suppose, for example, uh, for, yeah, let's just suppose for now that we only have a random oracle f. We don't have O and a val that give us XIO. Let's just suppose we only have a random oracle f for simplicity. Um, what Puyo discussed before uh, is that if there's an adversary that sees this transcript and wants to break the key agreement, what they can do is simulate executions of Alice and Bob and try to effect, essentially try and learn queries that were asked in the real protocol. Obviously, it's more complicated, but basically the adversary samples executions consistent with queries that it knows and then makes new queries based on those executions, effectively building up a set of queries that should try and capture queries that Alice and Bob make in the real protocol at a very high level. Um, but in our case, right, we don't just have this random oracle f, we have f, o, and eval, which is very different from a random oracle because eval depends on o and on f, right? It takes circuits and inverts them relative to o, or obfuscated circuits and inverts them relative to o, and then evaluates them where they themselves make calls to f and o and eval. So this is the main challenge in this proof, is dealing with the fact that our oracle is you know, three functions that are dependent. Um, and to exactly illustrate this, uh, suppose we have Alice in the key agreement protocol, and suppose she makes a query on some circuit, she wants to obfuscate it. She gets back C hat. Now, she already knows, maybe, depending on if C makes further Oracle queries, she already knows a val on C hat on X. So even though she never made that query to a val, she knows the answer to an Oracle query which is problematic when we're trying to learn queries made in the real protocol, because she never made that query, but she knows the answer. Even if she does make that query, a val is gonna find C and try and evaluate it, but C might have oracle gates, so a val might then make even more queries to all the oracles, a bounded number, because C is polynomial sized. Uh, but still, this is a problem for us. So basically, to overcome it, our attacker who's trying to learn queries made in the real protocol is gonna also ask all these indirect queries. So if Alice makes some query on C, our attacker is actually gonna uh, run uh, C on every input X, effectively getting the truth table of C. So there's none of these uh, queries that, are, that Alice knows the answer to, but she didn't query them, or that are like, made on her behalf by a val. Um, and this is exactly the place where we're relying on XIO, because our attacker is gonna make a polynomial number of queries but learn the truth table of every circuit that uh, one of the parties queries. So this is exactly the place where we can't rely on IO, we need XIO. And that's kind of the gist at high level. Um, so that's all I'm gonna say about the proof here, but it's very similar to the IR proof, or it's rather, it's more similar to the BKSY proof, but it's the same style as those proofs, yeah. Wait, is that the proof It is. Yeah, so, if, yeah. yeah, but since Alice is a polynomial time algorithm, any circuit that she queries to the obfuscation oracle, she's gonna get back some exponentially long string. So that circuit has to have a small number of inputs for her to be able to like read that, the output so of the oracle. The yep, exactly, yep. Yes, it, that is definitely a downside. Um, it could probably be extended uh, similar to like, you know, okay, you're right. I'm not gonna commit to that. Um, maybe it can be extended. We didn't extend it because we felt like uh, this really captured what's going on here. Um, yeah, uh, but not in the way that you're asking. So from SXIO, uh, I mentioned that from SXIO, strong SIO, and when we functions, you can get IO. So that relies on garbling. But if we could get this to work for, per, for imperfect, uh, yeah, for imperfect, we would also capture strong XIO. But since we only work, it has to do with whether or not O is unique. I'm happy to talk about it offline. Uh, but basically, we'd capture SXIO plus one-way functions in a way in a black box model that doesn't handle garbling, well, it's known if you did have garbling. But I'm happy to talk about it later. Uh, yeah, so this is basically, um, so, yeah. So what kind of gates are allowed in C that you obfuscate? 
uh, any Oracle gates, so F, O, and eval. So um, really quick, I just think that even though it's in a black box model, right, there's, sub, there's you know, constructions that are not black box, um, this really kind of suggests that compression in both time and output length is m somewhat uh, inherent here, because XIO compresses function size, and in that transformation that I mentioned that takes XIO and LWE to IO, um, the LWE is used to construct this succinct functional encryption scheme uh, by Goldwasser et al., and this compresses running time. So it really kind of seems like both of these are necessary up to this black box setting. Um, yeah, and also both of these are separated from IO. So it's like, it's kind of what we were after at the beginning of showing uh, what kind of assumptions are really necessary for IO. Like you need this type of compression and that type of compression is one way to interpret this result. Um, and as I mentioned, an open problem is to capture garbled circuits I think would be really nice to capture in this model because it's used in these constructions. Um, yeah. Um, so really quick, I just want to mention uh, some, uh, some stuff about the, of compressing obfuscation with statistical security. So the main idea here is to take advantage of the long running time of XIO, and, or of compressing obfuscation. It's, it doesn't really have the parameters of XIO. Uh, but basically, uh, we have this theorem that uh, XIO with compressing obfuscation with this output length exists for AC0. And to do this, we use circuit compression which is uh, a problem that takes in some truth table and tries to output a circuit of non-trivial size, which is similar to what we have in XIO, because in XIO we know the truth table of the circuit. Um, and you can also use pack learning here. So this is uh, what I was saying before, about here we get a perfect ob statistical obfuscator, perfectly correct, statistically secure obfuscator. Uh, if we use pack learning, we would get a perfectly correct, uh, approximately correct, statistically secure obfuscator. Um, but anyways, Either of these techniques, they are black box, they, so therefore they actually imply compressing VBB obfuscation, but they don't work for um, circuits that contain a PRF. And what we really need for, or a punctual, puncturable PRF, what we really need for like constructions from XIO, like XIO to IO, is really XIO for PRFs. So they're inherently limited because they're black box. And actually we show that you can't do much better than this. So this is a construction of XIO, so it has polynomial two to the n running time, but bounded output length. If we look at stronger compression, but for strong XIO, so both the running time and output length are bounded, um, we can actually get a compressing obfuscator that uh, such a compressing obfuscator implies that uh, on COSAT is in, has an AM protocol where the verifier runs in uh, this time two to the epsilon n, also times c for some constant c and the uh, message from the verifier is this length. This is kind of an interesting conclusion of this theorem because it's actually sometimes true. So we don't rule out compressing obfuscation when this is true. Specifically, this conclusion is true when epsilon is a half, uh, but it's p possible that it would be true, that it would be false for smaller epsilon, which would rule out such a compressing obfuscator. So um, just to wrap up, I uh, just want to say that compressing obfuscation Based on this separation, it's kind of unusual. Because when we look at mini-crypt, like one-way functions, and we add XIO in this black box model, we don't get anything, right? We don't get public key encryption. We only get mini-crypt. But if we add it to cryptomania, right, if we take LWE, which is used to construct this public key primitive, we actually get all of IO. So that's uh, kind of intriguing, because we don't, like, there aren't many primitives that behave like this. I'll just conclude with two open questions. Um, first, XIO is one of the few primitives not known to imply one-way functions. This is particularly interesting because a natural approach to do this would be to take uh, the construction of one-way functions from IO and some complexity assumption, right, which is necessary here. Uh, and that doesn't work because that basically obfuscates uh, a SAP formula on n variables. And here we can't do it. We could only obfuscate a SAP formula on log n variables, which isn't hard. So, so this is, I think, a really interesting question. Um, because we don't really know like, the hardness of XAO. And another question here is to look at the relationship between compressing obfuscation and MCSP. They seem related, because they can both look at the truth table of the circuit, but we don't really have results on it other than the, the result that if MCSP is easy, we can solve XAO, but that's not the direction we really want to go in. So um, yeah, these are some open questions, and thanks.
Um, it's possible. I'm, I'm not. Uh, we looked at this a little bit. Um, we, we thought a little bit about that, but I don't have results on it, but maybe, yeah. Uh, 